All right, so let's look at today's homework. You're going to notice that it is uh, quite a bit different than the homework that you had on Friday as far as how the questions are being asked, right? You don't just see a combination and a permutation and, you know, you have to figure it out with no word problem associated with it. So we're going to apply combinations and permutations. You're going to have to figure out does order matter or not. That way you know whether you should use a combination or a permutation. So you have the formulas in front of you. Again, you need to memorize them for your test. They won't be given to you. If I can get that on fuzzy. Let's try this. One more click. <laughs> oh, there we go. But now we're, yeah, don't, don't let it bother you. You are seeing bubble. Welcome to my world. Yeah, that's how I see, so, you know, you'll get used to it. All right, at least we have a overhead projector today. All right, so let's look at number one. How many ways can you arrange the letters of the word factor? Does order matter when you arrange letters for a word? Yes. yes. So what I want you to get in the habit of writing over here is order matters. That helps your brain determine should you be using a combination or a permutation. Order matters, which one? Yes. Hair permanent, order matters, so permutation. So we're going to use a permutation. How many items do we have to choose from? We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And how many items are we arranging at the same time? Six. So your formula for permutation is six factorial, that's your n, over, then you're going to subtract the six and or the n and the r, so the sixes get subtracted factorial. Isn't that 6 factorial over 0 factorial? What's the value of 0 factorial? 1. And so we really have 6 factorial over 1. So we've got 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. If you have a calculator, calculate that. Not your cell phone, but your calculator. What is it? 700. Did you do that in your head? Okay. So we got 720 ways that we could rearrange the letters of factor. Now, as we were discussing earlier, there's only, if we want the word factor, there's only one arrangement that's correct, right? Yeah. Would we get other words maybe for those letters than factor? Yeah. You, you could. But if you want the word factor, out of 720 ways, there's only one correct arrangement. And I might ask you that question later on. So let's look at number two. How many ways can you choose two jelly beans from a bag of 15? Does order matter? No. No, so order doesn't matter. When you're picking things out of a bag or a box, order doesn't matter. So does that mean it's a combination or a permutation? Combination. How many total items? 15. And how many am I choosing? Two. So according to your formula, you're going to take 15 factorial over 15 minus 2 factorial, and then your R is 2 factorial. So what I really have is 15 factorial. 15 minus 2 is 13 factorial times the 2 factorial. Are you all right with where I got those? Here's where your shorthand notation comes into play, and this is going to save you a lot of room. Are you ready? What's your biggest factorial in the denominator? 13. 13. So if I were you, I would stop. When you're doing the 15 factorial at the top, I would stop at 13 and make it a factorial. For instance, you're going to make your numerator 15, 14, and then stop at 13 and just say 13 factorial, right? So that you don't have to stretch out this 13 factorial. Always pick the bigger of the two. So I'm going to write just 13 factorial in the denominator, and then I will stretch out the 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1. Then can't I cancel this 13 factorial with that 13 factorial? Aren't they the same? I saved myself a lot of room. And I'm also going to cancel this 2 into the 14 seven times. So all I have left is a 15 times a 7. And if I multiply that out, I get 
105. So 105 ways. So then we're going to skip down to number 5. So number five says, how many different sets of six questions for a test can be chosen from a file containing 22 questions? So if I have a file with 22 questions and I just reach in and grab five, so I'm going to do a real quick pop quiz. Does it matter what order I write those five questions in? Will it be the same test or a different test? Same test. So does order matter? No. So order doesn't matter. So is that a combination or a permutation? Combination. So how many total items do I have to choose from? 22. How many am I choosing? Six. So then for a combination, we've got 22 factorial <coughs> divided by 22 minus 6 factorial. And then you have to write the 6 factorial again. So that really leaves me with 22 factorial. <coughs> over what's 22 minus 6? 16 factorial times 6 factorial. So out of the two on the bottom, which is the biggest? 16 factorial. So when you're stretching out the 22, stop at 16. So you're going to stop, and but make sure that you write 16 factorial and you just don't write 16. And so all of that's divided by 16 factorial, and then 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So I can cancel that 16 factorial with that 16 factorial. And then everything else in the denominator needs to cancel with something in the numerator. If you can't cancel, then you did something wrong. So the 6, is, the six can go into the 18. Sometimes you might have to split something amongst 2. The 5 can go into the 20. The 4 can divide out with the 4 here. The 3 can divide out with the 3 here. And then the 2 can go into the 22. So I'm left with a 22, or an 11, a 21, a 19, and a 17. So if I multiply those together, I get 74,613 uh, sets of questions. That's a lot of different tests. All right, then let's look at number eight. And I chose number eight for a reason. So eight says a 12 set encyclopedia is to be arranged on a shelf. Does order matter? Yes, right, so you figure that out. So order matters. So is that a combination or a permutation? permutation. But then notice this. It says how many incorrect arrangements are possible. It's an encyclopedia. How many correct arrangements are possible? One. So how are we going to figure out how many incorrect are possible? That's right. So we're going to find all the possibilities and subtract one and then that'll be our answer. So since we have a permutation, how many total items do we have to choose from? 12. How many items are we arranging? 12. So we end up with 12 factorial over what? Yeah, 12 minus 12 factorial, which is 12 factorial over 0 factorial, which is 12 factorial, right? And isn't that no different than earlier on when we were doing factorials at the very beginning, and I think it was 14, 1? We were just arranging things in order. Didn't we just do a factorial? 
because when you arrange things in order, a line, on a shelf, wherever, uh, it's just a factorial. So, so you've got to multiply all those together. And once you do that, you get 479 million. 1,600 possibilities, but we are going to subtract out the one correct way, right? And so what's my answer? Five hundred and ninety-nine incorrect arrangements. So you might have some problems that are going to put just a little twist on, change things a little bit. All right, so flip that. Then we start getting into some things a little bit more complicated related to arrangements. So there are seven children to be lined up in a straight line for a photograph. So this is number nine. Number nine has four parts to it. So we're going to go ahead and go through all four parts because it's going to relate to 10 and 11, and I'll have you do those on your own. So how many different ways are possible? Go ahead and figure that out. Does order matter? Yeah, so it's a combination or permutation. Permutation. How many items are you choosing from? Seven. And how many are you having to arrange? Seven. So could you do a shortcut to this? Yeah, so since order matters, and it's a permutation, anytime it's a permutation and the N and the R are the same number, so they're both seven, isn't it just seven factorial? That only works in a permutation. So figure out what that is. Did we do that earlier? We did six factorial earlier, right? What'd you get? You did? Should be a whole lot less than 5,040. There you go. 5,040. <coughs> Then look at the next question. I have 5,040 ways. It says, how many different ways are possible if Sally must be in the middle? So draw yourself a picture of what's going on. Here's Sally. She's special. She wants to be in the middle. Maybe she's the tallest. I don't know. So how many people are to the left of her? Three. How many people are to the right of her? There's Four. seven all together, so does that leave three? Right? We really could look at this just being an arrangement of six people, as long as we just throw Sally in the middle all the time, right? Does order matter? Yes. So it's still a permutation. But how many items are we choosing from this time? Six, because Sally will always be in the middle. And we're arranging six people. What's the shortcut? When these are the same. So it's six factorial. Haven't we already done six factorial before? 720 ways. So the minute that Sally has to be in the, in the middle, it cuts our ways, our number of arrangements, down by quite a bit. Then look at what they do. How many different ways are possible if Ahmed is on the far left? And then how many people would be over here? Six, right? So that would be the same, right? It doesn't matter if, if you're keeping one person still and the other ones are moving, it's still gonna be 720 ways, right? 
So that's the same as when Sally was in the middle. So if I put somebody on the far right and we had to arrange six people on the left, it'd still be 720 waves. Say that again. Is Sally still in the middle? No. For that one, we're assuming Sally is now moving along with everybody. All right. So then D says, um, how many different ways are possible if Hannah and Brian must be together? So Hannah and Brian have to be together. So if I were you, make Hannah and Brian a unit of one. How many people are we arranging now? Five, right? But is there a different arrangement if I switch Hannah and Brian? So can't I figure out how many arrangements there would be if I put Hannah and Brian together as one unit and they arranged five people? It doesn't matter where we put Hannah and Brian, just like it didn't matter where we put Sally or Ahmed. If we're moving one unit, and in these cases we had six to arrange, we have five now to arrange because Hannah and Brian are one unit. So it doesn't matter where they're at. They could be in the middle of the group, the left, the right, second, second from the end, right? We're still arranging five other people around them. But for each of these arrangements for the five people, if I switch Hannah and Brian, doesn't that double the arrangements? Because each of those arrangements would be different then. So write yourself a note. Um, count Hannah and Brian as one. So, because Hannah and Brian can move, they can be in any, they don't have to be first, right? So because they don't have to be stationary, we're not really arranging five people, we're really arranging six people here, aren't we? Yeah, they could be first, they could be middle, they could be end, they could be second. So they count as one unit, so this is one plus the five more that we have to arrange. Doesn't that mean I'm arranging six units, so to speak, all together? So really, so this is your second note, really, you're arranging six people, because we're counting Hannah and Brian as one. Then, yes? Well, because we're keeping them together, so we're counting them as one person together. Then we're going to take care of the fact that I could switch Hannah and Brian, just switch their positions right and left. So I could do Brian and Brian Hannah, right? So then to fix that, how are we going to do that? Take your answer and multiply by two because, so BC, Hannah and Brian can switch. So this is a little tricky. So we're making Hannah and Brian one unit. Since we're counting them as one person, plus we have five more people to arrange, that's six people that we're gonna arrange all together, order matters. So it's a permutation of six items taken six at a time which is six factorial, which equals what? 720 waves. But then we're gonna multiply that by two because Hannah and Brian can then switch places in each of those 720 waves. We assumed it was Hannah Brian. Well, then I can switch each of those 720 waves and make it Brian Hannah, and those are different arrangements, but they're still together. And so we end up with 1,440 ways. Does that make sense? Okay. Then the last thing I want to discuss with you is a deck of cards. One of the reasons why we put this picture of a deck of cards on here is because there's a lot of you that have never actually played a deck with a deck of cards, or at least not that often, so you don't know what's in there. First of all, how many total cards are there? So 52 total. So if I were you, I'd write that up there. Then if you have a red pen, take it out, or a red pencil, something. 
because then you've got these different suits. You have spades. What are those clubs? Those All those are clubs. Bad. Sorry, I can't see that small. Spades and clubs look the same. Okay. So these are clubs. And these are spades. And those are black suits. So I'm going to put a black box around them. Those cards are either red or black. Unless you have some different funky looking set of cards. And then these are hearts, right? Wait till you get old and you can't see. Oh, it looks much better up there. And then these are diamonds. So you're going to start to be asked a whole lot of questions about cards as we go along with this probability unit. But for today, you need to know that you have 52 total. You have four suits. So if I asked you how many ways could I arrange a suit of clubs, you have to know how many cards are in a suit of clubs. How many cards are in each of these suits? 13. What's 13 times 4? 52. Then, um, these are all red, so how many red cards do we have? 26. And then these are all black, and we have 26 black. Then on top of that, aces are not special in mathematics. They might be in your card game, but in math they count just as a number one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we have the face cards, which are jack, king, Queen and King. Those are queens. There are 12 face cards. How many numbered cards are there? 40. Yeah, 10 times 4 is 40. Um, how many red numbered cards are there? 20. 20. How many red face cards are there? 6. 6. Um, how many uh, numbered cards of 5 are there? 4. Four. So each of, the, each of these, there's only four of those. So then let's go and look at some of these questions that are asked over here. You have a standard deck of cards, and by the way, jokers aren't included in the standard deck of cards. In how many different ways can you deal out? So I'm gonna have you look at, um, we're gonna do A, five cards. You can deal, deal out any five cards. It doesn't matter whether they're red, black, it doesn't matter what suit they are, whether it's a numbered card or a phase card. Jacob, do I have your attention? So how many cards, first of all, does order matter when I deal out the five cards? Yeah. If five cards, does order matter? Yeah. No. You could arrange them in different orders, but it's, it's no different than picking five marbles out of a bag of 52. I'm just picking those five marbles, what I have in my hand, if they're in a different arrangement than what's in Daniel's hand, they're the same cards, aren't they? So order doesn't matter as far as arrangement goes, so am I doing a combination or a permutation? A combination. How many did I have to choose from? 52. How many did I choose? Five. Five. So since it's a combination, I'm going to do 52 factorial over 52 minus 5 factorial, 5 factorial. So use your shortcut that 52 factorial divided by, um, what's 52 minus 5? 47 factorial and then 5 factorial. So I'm going to take 52 and go out to which factorial? <coughs> 47 because that's bigger, right? So I'm stopping there. And then don't forget your five factorial. So this 47 factorial cancels with that 47 factorial. And then my five, I'm going to cancel it with a 50 10 times. And the four, I'm going to cancel into the 48 12 times. And the three, I'm going to cancel the three into the 12 four times. And then I'm going to cancel the 2 into the 4 two times. So I'm left with a 52 of 
51, a 10, 49, and a 2. So I, if I multiply all those together, what do I get? A very large number. You should get 2,598,000 960 ways. It's a lot of different hard hands you can have. All right, then put a little line through here and a little line through here because you actually have a, a question you have to do there. So you ought to be able to do that one now yourself. And then let's look at C. We'll do C also. Five red cards. Does order matter? Whatever five red cards I deal out, does order matter? No. So this is again a combination. How many cards do I have to choose from to deal four, five red cards? Twenty-six, right? Because I don't care about the black ones. So I've got twenty-six red to choose from, and I only want five of them. So it's the same thing as above, but we're using twenty-six, right? So we end up with 26 factorial over 21 factorial, 5 factorial. So you want to take the 26 out to 21. And then cancel your 21 factorial and your 21 factorial. The 5, I would cancel into the 25 five times. The 4 into the 24 six times. The 3 into, and the 2. Can't I cancel the 3 and the 2 together and cross out the 6? So that leaves me with a 26, a 5, a 23, and a 22. And if you multiply those, you get 65,000. 780 ways. So then I'm leaving for you how to figure out how to do four queens and ten cards. And then of course you've got the other ones that we haven't done.